testing now? Oh, that's okay. Um, we're going to have two soapbox sessions during this break, and uh, my first soapbox speaker is already standing on the box. He's going to give a five-minute talk on skills that testers need to have, followed by some things on female and male skills that testers will be having. So come around, come a little bit closer if you want to hear what Steve is going to say, because it will be flashy, it will be short, it will be brief, but it will be clear. Uh, let me introduce Steve, he's a good friend of mine, and I'm really looking forward to your views on testing skills. Thank you very much for the introduction, Dirk, and thanks for the invitation to the Soapbox. Hope you're enjoying the Eurostar conference. Yeah, I'm Steve Allett. I run the, uh, I, uh, the Capita graduate training program called Novus. So uh, this view is based on my experience of teaching over 100 testers, wannabe testers, how to become test analysts. And what I did was by starting asking some of the people in this conference what are the competencies, skills, knowledge that testers are going to need now and in the future. And we came up with around about 18 attributes that make a good tester. Number one, no, uh, that will run over time for, 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 for Peter's uh, session. Um, if you want those, I'm writing a paper, so I'm happy to send them to, to you. I came up with uh, three to summarize. Critical thinking, which you've already heard about, is important. Curiosity. The, the curiosity to know what's happening and what's going on. Isabel talked about this a little bit this morning. You've got to want to, to be a tester. And capability, the, you must have the capability to understand complex things, model those complex things, and then analyze them and come up with some test ideas. I went back to 1956 to Benjamin Bloom to see what he said about an educational taxonomy in terms of how would we teach people some of these skills. And without going into all six levels to run out of time, <laughs> the first four are applicable, I think, to the junior test analyst. Knowing basic ideas, understanding basic concepts, being able to apply them to testing problems, and then analyze problems and use the right technique at the right time. Let me give you an example, one from my um, private life. Some of you may know I'm, as well as a software tester, I'm a professional badminton coach for Badminton England. Um, and I used to run a club in my local village. People would say to me, Steve, um, I lost that last game. Where should I be standing? What tactics should I be employing? And I'd say to them, well, you played the wrong shot because you're holding the racket wrong. You're not using a backhand grip for that particular shot. There are two types of grips. Yes, there are. My software testers, my wannabe testers come to me and say, Remember they're on a 12-week introductory course in how to be a junior test analyst. They want to do test automation. What sort of test automation? Well, since we're partners with our friends HP here, I'd expect them to say they want to learn QTP, but they all say to a man and a woman, Selenium web driver, please. Okay, well, Alan Richardson can sell you a very good online course to do that. How good's your Java? Java? A programming language. Yes, a programmer is. What's that? Well, you know, come on, you need to know a little bit about data types and integers and, and, and so on to, to learn the basics to be able to, to progress. So one of my arguments is that testers of the future are going to need to learn programming, technology skills, learn the technology that is on their projects, but view it from a testing perspective. And picking up on some ideas from, from Neil Thompson, Testers of the future are going to be, have to be aware of the, of the choices that they've got when they're learning new skills. Agile, yes, TDD, BDD, ATDD, and all the other DDs that are out there, you have to learn them, but Isabel this morning in an excellent keynote did point out some of the pitfalls of just doing Agile. There, there are many other things to consider. And Neil has suggested that the traditional structured disciplined approach shouldn't be lost. He's spoken here about using value flow scorecards, risk-based testing and his new holistic risk-based testing, all skills worth having. And don't forget, of course, the context-driven school, uh, the black box software testing techniques courses from the Association of Software Testing. I haven't done that course myself, but Neil's done it. Really, really good course and uh, lots and lots of new techniques. They also do a course on bug advocacy and test design, and the test design course has hundreds and hundreds of techniques that will help you, and I'd suspect in both traditional and agile environments. Finally, to sum up, 
or, or to add one more skill, the soft skills, the people skills, the interpersonal skills, whatever your choice is, we make uh, a big play of that on our uh, training courses. We use comedy improvisation uh, to allow the, the students to learn how to work together. I think there's a, a direct correlation between what actors have to do to improvise something on the, on the stage with what we have to do to improvise in our testing uh, activities. So if you want to play the game, uh, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, uh, you need to learn the rules and play to win. Thank you very much. left oh, uh, we have a two minute break so the next speaker can prepare he already prepared some secret slides over there but I have not been revealed in the meanwhile if I can do something on Thursday there will be a session after the closure in which we can ask all kind of questions to each other and the program committee so basically it's like if you have an answer that you want to be a question that you want to be answered before you leave the conference Put the question in the box and we might pick it out on the session, so please fill in some questions and help me out with that. And the next person is already preparing. And Manfred was going to talk about, I think, female and male qualities in testers. Um, are you ready, Manfred? Yes. Yeah, I'll just hand you the mic and wish you good luck. Five minutes. Thank you. I've got five minutes to talk about why testing is getting feminized. And if I look around here, um, 10 years ago the relation between male and female testers was completely different. So I think I'm right with my statement and I will try to show you why this is so. Um, if you look at the IT and what was the focus on IT during the last years, if you look at the 1970s and 90s, there was very much about system and technology, uh, which means because the CPU, the memory, the networks, very much hardware, uh, hardware and things which IT was uh, it cover. In the 1990s, in the 2010, it was more software and services which was focused uh, on the IT, which means it was focused on programming things, analytics, modeling, object-oriented. Uh, approaches and so on. Uh, since the 2010 up to now and in the future I think it's much, it's, it's much more about social business, uh, the business at the customers. It's not that easy. Which means uh, much more about business integration, digital communications, consumer communications, uh, it's much about uh, visualizing and all this kind of stuff, complex data, complex systems. And uh, if you look at the brain of the human, uh, in the closer, the left side of the brain is much more logic, analytics, number, written, which is assigned to the left side of the brain. The right side of the brain is more interest, holistics, initiative and creative. And so the IT uh, turns from the left side of the brain more to the right side of the brain. So there is a, a, a shift in this direction and uh, if you think about uh, which sides of the brain are assigned to whom, The left side is more assigned to the masculine uh, attributes, uh, it is said to be in that way, while the right side, the right side is more uh, defined to the feminine uh, attributes. So if you look at that and you follow the change, uh, and you follow IT, it's for sure that we need more female testers and attributes to test these systems of the future. So that is, uh, uh, the, 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 a clear thing and uh, in Austria where I come from we uh, already got kind of a perfect approach to that I call it the con Conchita approach uh, so she is uh, or he is a, a man uh, living as a 
female and uh, with this approach he managed to win the song contest and so I'm sure that we also will uh, let's say win the test contest with more female attributes but also with male attributes testing is still very technical but it is changing towards uh, the capabilities you the female testers have already and we guys we have to also focus a little bit on that and then Maybe we can pass like a phoenix assigned to this, the song where he or she did win the contest. Thank you. Thank you very much, Manfred. You'll probably be around, right, for discussions. Yeah. If people want to, yeah, okay. So thank you very much. Those were the two soapbox sessions for today. Um, in, in the next break there will be more. Martin Paul was just sitting over there and just left. We'll be doing some later. And on the monitors over there there's a full program of all activities that are being done in the hub. So I hope to see you around in the next break. Thank you very much.